Hi guys, uh, Happy New Year, welcome to 2018 and I wish you all the best uh, for your projects this year. Um, for my first post of the year, I just want to look back at the last few weeks uh, of 2017 and that was when I felt that something very interesting was happening uh, in, in entertainment and that was in a case where there was a vast discrepancy between the opinions of critics and the public. Um, they were at very uh, strong, strong odds with each other. Uh, the first incidence of this was uh, with Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, I thought it would be a no-brainer that people would be happy with it, but while critics celebrated the movie, uh, ordinary cinema goers uh, had, gave it a far cooler reception um, critically. Um, and now, uh, in the last few weeks of December, we also had Bright, which is Netflix's first original movie. Uh, and it was made for a budget of around $90 million, which puts it you know, it's equitable with a Hollywood blockbuster made for the big screen. And while critics absolutely slammed the movie, um, there are a lot of very vocal, um, ordinary supporters of this R-rated um, buddy cop um, action fantasy hybrid um, and the basic premise of this if you don't know is that it is set in a contemporary Los Angeles that is shared between um, elves, orcs and humans and a few other uh, magical beings as well and uh, it was interesting to see that there were even some people who were quite loud on social media saying that they preferred Bright uh, to The Last Jedi. Now, I do think that mainstream filmmakers will probably be quite pleased with this turn of events. For a long time now, they've been saying that, no, no, they make movies for the fans and, and not for critics. Uh, that was certainly uh, what they tried to argue with The Mummy, but nobody really liked that one anyway. Um, but anyway, I feel that this kind of um, strong clash of opinion is very in keeping with the themes of 2017 in general, uh, which was a year where we saw a lot of very strong splits in opinion across all factors of life. Um, so what did I think about Bright? Um, I saw those initial review comments, but I do feel like Will Smith has sort of joined the ranks of Tom Cruise and probably Jennifer Lawrence as well, where critics sort of, a lot of them seem to wait uh, with their knives sharp and to just lay into the movie regardless of, of its merits. So you can't actually judge what they have to say uh, about it. And I like to have an informed opinion um, and be able to give commentary based on my own feelings. And also I've always really liked Will Smith. I find him a very charismatic and authentic performer. But for Bright, for me, well, I agree with the critics. Um, I thought it was painfully bad. Um, even worse, um, I thought it was a disappointment, a huge disappointment where it actually squandered a really strong concept with loads of potential. And I think that really is at the core of the difference of opinion between those who really enjoyed it and those who hated it, is that the degree to which they were satisfied with Bright's exploration of its world and its concept. And I wasn't satisfied at all. Uh, for me, everything felt obvious and heavy-handed and clunky. I'm not going to lay any blame on the actors, who I think all did a very good job with what they were given. Um, I felt that Numi Rapace, who is the film's villain, was wasted especially. Uh, she's actually quite a gifted actress, and I think she was hired here purely for her intense uh, look and appearance. She has maybe five lines in the entire movie. Um, and there were also a lot of terrible creative choices from director David Ayer, who did uh, Suicide Squad, and also uh, writer Max Landis, who was responsible for Chronicle. Uh, I felt the, food, the movie was clunky, devoid of energy, and boring. Um, a, an example of this is that right, Bright is in the fantasy genre. So what do they do? They drop in references to a dark lord and a prophecy because, well, that's what they was a good central element in both Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. But they name drop these elements and never actually do anything with them um, in Bright. It, it's lazy and sort of, you know, dropping more things into a pot that are unnecessary. Um, I find it to be a very frustrating viewing experience. Um, instead of exploring the world lore of this fascinating concept, we get three minute conversations about how fairies throw their shits. And, and Bright really spends a lot of time straining to appear adult and edgy. So there's lots of profanity and you know the requisite visit to a strip club. Um, 
I, I also was left with so many questions about this world. Like if orcs and humans and elves have been sharing the world evidently for centuries, why has it taken to the year 2016 for the first orc to enter the police force? Um, why in this world is magic uh, not more important? Why isn't there more of an, a natural integration? For example, why aren't people eating Lembus bread if we use a Lord of the Rings example? Or why aren't there humans out there who've adopted the, who now sport um, orc tusks as a form of body modification? Um, I'm speaking from coming from South Africa, a country that is famous for its government orchestrated apartheid or separation. In that context, even with those attempts, there was still a, a cross pollination of cultures and interactions. People would be listening to the same music. It did happen. And um, in Bright, it's evidently there has been a complete segregation and, and there has been absolutely no integration, which really doesn't ring true at all. Um, the movie also has uh, zero nuance or depth. Uh, the core scenario of the movie is that uh, Will Smith's veteran beat cop is paired with the, the first ever orc uh, rookie police officer and he's played by Joel Edgerton under loads and loads of makeup. Um, but while you see Will Smith's home life, um, Edgerton's character remains an inept other. You're never encouraged to see the world through his eyes. He isn't fleshed out or made to feel real at all. So you're not actually in this tale that has a lot to do with racial prejudice. Um, it, you're never actually encouraged to see the, the black stand-in character as, as a human being, which is very, very problematic. It, it's just another one of 50 ingredients um, just, just thrown into the project and never really explored or developed um, with any kind of sensitivity or thoughtfulness. So my overall impression is that if you want to watch a cop drama uh, with credible and involving dialogue, watch Aya's End of Watch. That was a really, really good movie. If you want to uh, something that explores cops and prejudice but through a genre filter, go and seek out Alien Nation. And if you want urban fantasy with elves, perhaps it's better to palate cleanse and go seek out Hellboy's sequel, The Golden Army. Uh, Bright is devoid of energy or originality. I felt the dialogue was actually cringeworthy um, as it foreshadows uh, certain events with the subtlety of like literally throwing a brick at someone's head. That, that's what it felt like. Um, and I think that honestly by accepting and celebrating a movie like Bright, you're basically encouraging filmmakers to continue this kind of lackluster movie making. And audiences, while you say, may say, oh no, it's fine, you deserve more than tasteless junk food. I mean, Bright could have been so much more, as far as I'm concerned. But now I'm going to open the floor to you. Um, if you could share your opinions about Bright below this video. And um, peace out and Happy New Year for 2018. Let's do better this year.